Hey everybody, it is Matchbox Day. Don't go away. Hello everybody, it is Paul from Fat Guy Productions coming to you as always from beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada. And it is indeed a Matchbox Custom Day as we're going to be tackling the Meriwether Fire Engine. Let's get right to it. Yes, indeed, it is Matchbox Custom Day, and the victim is this Meriwether Fire Engine. You can see it's got the one the rivet in the back and a tab in the front, so we'll drill it away using my Vixbit method. Slick as snot and perfectly centered. Okay, so now uh, I've got a lot of support going on here, so I might as well drill the post out the rest of the way. So I've got the smaller bit that will drill a hole for the screw that I'll use to put the fire truck back together later on. All right, there you have it. Now that I've got that done, I can go ahead and pop the base off the uh, body of the car. Get a little help here, and there it goes. And then just pull the tab out of the front. And there you have it. You can see that this is a really, really simple model. No suspension, no interior, no glass, no nothing. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get the wheels off the base. And today I'm going to use my trusty square-jawed pliers. And I'm going to squish that crimp that's at the end of the axle down until I get it flat enough that the wheel will come off. This way I'm not sacrificing any of the material from the original axle. With the wheels off, we can now bust out the gel paint stripper and strip down the body and the base and get rid of all that gnarly old chipped up nasty paint. Okay, now that the paint is pretty much gone, I can go ahead and wash this off with some clean water and then I'll hit it with the brass bristle brush and once I've done that and it's nice and shiny, I can take it over to the paint booth. I've been having really great results with the Tamiya paints, and so that's what I'm going to be using here today in this X7 Gloss Red. Now, if I was doing a Hot Wheel with the Spectra Flame paint, I would, of course, use that. But for most of my other restorations and customs, I'm going to turn to this Tamiya paint. It's been really, really going on nicely and giving me a great finish. So I'll start with some of the red paint. Next, I'm going to thin that paint down with a little X20 Tamiya thinner. Okay, so now that I've got it thinned down, I'm going to go ahead and add about seven or eight drops of Mr. Color Self-Leveling Thinner. This will help give me a nice smooth finish. It's important to remember, though, this is going to retard the drying of the paint, so it's going to take longer for it to dry. You'll get a smoother product, but it's going to take longer, so just be patient with it. I should be able to put a drop of the paint on the side of the cup and it should just run completely right down the side and yet leave a trail of color. Oh. 
Okay, my little concoction is nice and mixed up. We'll go ahead and load the airbrush and get ready to lay down some paint. All right, so as always, I'll start this paint job off with a nice thin tack coat. Then I'm going to follow it up with a medium coat. And then I'm going to wrap everything up with a, a one or two really nice wet coats. The trick with the wet coats is it has to be wet enough that it's glossy and shiny and wet looking as you're laying it down, but not so heavy that it's going to run or sag. And the only way to get that is to have proper lighting so that you can see the paint as you're laying it down. See how shiny this sucker is? That's what you're looking for. That's exactly how you want it to look. Okay, I'm super happy with this. So it's going to end up sitting over on the side of my room for about five or six hours to dry. And then I'm going to lay down some polyurethane clear coat. I'm not going to get to play with my gauzy this time around because there's no glass. But I sure can use my Super Clean to clean up the tires of this uh, fire truck. And then I'll uh, chuck up the axles in my drill and sand them down a little bit. With the tires clean and the axle sanded, I can go ahead and put them back onto the painted base. Here I am back out at the drill press using Marty's method for putting these back together. Again, this is just a couple nails. Um, they're roofing nails. I'll actually, in the next video, I'll show you the box that I bought. I got them at Home Depot. They actually kind of had a little concave area in them right when I bought them. So all I really needed to do was just kind of smooth out the, uh, the hollow and uh, make it a little bit bigger. And I was in business. So basically, I've got the two nails in, in here, one in the drill press, one in the piece of wood, and I put the axle in between it and kind of just spin over the end of the axle. Well, it doesn't need to sit for, well, almost seven days. This particular model did. So it's really cured very, very well. But at least three days is about right. And now that it's dry, I can go ahead and start some of the detail work. I'm going to start by taking my Molotov Chrome pen and pumping a little of the ink out of the pen into a little cup so that I can paint it on with a brush. I'm going to go ahead and paint the siren and the bell and the name badge on the front of the engine and the little cap on the top back, all with the Molotow. Other areas that are going to be silver are going to be more like an aluminum silver. So I'll have two different kinds of things going on here. Don't be fooled into thinking the uh, little doodad on the upper front left corner is a flashing light, because it isn't. It's a bell. So, since it's a bell, it's going to get the Molotow Chrome. That Molotow Chrome is pretty special, but it also takes a long time to dry. So just be sure you don't touch it after you put it down.
On the front of the engine, just under where the ladder sits, there's a little blue light. Well, this is the closest thing I could think of to work, and courtesy of my wife, she gave me this little packet of blue gems. They're just about the right size, they're self-adhesive, they're ready to go. So I'm going to take the smallest one out of the package and stick it on the front to be the blue light. Well, I gotta say, I think that looks pretty sporty special. Okay, with everything else done, it's pretty much time to marry the bottom back to the top. So I'll take the bottom, line it up the right way would help. I'm going to put the little tab back into the front of the engine, drop the back down, grab one of my little screws, and put this thing back together. And how beautiful and fun is this, huh? I really don't think this could have come out any better. I think it looks fantastic. All right, there you have it, the Merriweather fire engine. I think it came out pretty phenomenal, and as a fireman, I really, really love this little model. Uh, I wish the ladder was something that could come on and off, but uh, the tabs just didn't lend itself to that, so it's glued on there, but overall, I think it came out great. I'm really, really happy with it. Okay, I really hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. If you did, please give it a giant thumbs up, click subscribe, the little bell, and you can get alerts to let you know when I publish a new video. So make sure you do that, and ask any questions and make any comments that you might have. I really do read them all. I, it's one of the highlights of my day, is every day looking in and seeing what comments were made and talking with you guys. Okay, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions. I'm going to get out of here. Until next time, be good.